Okay, so we've covered what density is and we've covered the different ways to calculate density. We know that density means that you have to know the mass and the volume of any object in order to calculate the actual density or to compare the mass and the volume of, of an object. So what we're gonna do very quickly is we're gonna take a look again at our brass block. And our brass block had, if I remember correctly, it had a mass of 138 grams. And remember, we measured the length times the width times the height, which in this case was 2.5 times 2.5 times 2.5. And what we found was that's 15.625. And the unit, remember, is cubic centimeters. So in order to find the actual density, we need to divide 138 by 15.625, and we got 8.832. And remember, we can't divide grams by cubic centimeters, so we get grams per cubic centimeter. So we know that this brass block has a density of 8.832. That's important. Now we're gonna find the density of this block and this is pine. So when you listen, we know that this one is much less dense than this one. So we're gonna reset our triple beam balance. We're gonna place our pine block there. We're gonna attempt 100 grams, but it's way too much. So now we're gonna to go to 10 grams. Too much at 20 grams. Let's make it precise. So we have 12 grams of mass for this block. So the pine block, I'm gonna write brass here so we remember which one's which. Pine, has a mass of 12 grams. And because it's the exact same size as the other cube, I'm not gonna worry about finding the volume. The volume is gonna be 15.625 cubic centimeters. So we're gonna divide 12 divided by 15.625. And we find that our density is 0.768 grams per cubic centimeter. Now, this doesn't seem like a big deal, but a lot of times in science we do mathematical formulas and we come up with calculations and it's just a number. I know for me, sitting in labs a lot of times, I didn't know what the numbers meant and it didn't make much sense. But here's where we have some scientific magic. So, water density, water density is important because density allows things to sink or float. So think about when you have oil and water, they don't mix. Oil floats to the top and that's because oil is less dense than the water that it's in. If it hasn't been raining for a long time and all of a sudden it rains, our roads become slippery and that's because the water gets into the creases of the road and pushes the oil out. That's what makes it slippery. We also know that helium, as a gas, is less dense than the air around it, and that's what makes a helium balloon float. So when we're building a boat, or we're trying to make something float, or a life jacket, anything that we want to float, it has to be less dense than the water it's gonna float in. If we want something to sink, it has to be more dense than the water that it's gonna be in. So we know one specific fact, and that is that the density of water is always, if it's pure water with nothing added to it, the density of water, which we're gonna call H2O, is 1.0 grams per, not cubic centimeter because it's not a solid, per milliliter. And a milliliter is the same thing as a cubic centimeter if you compare the two. 
So just one's a liquid and one's a solid. So when we look at water, water has a density of one, one gram per milliliter. That means if you had one cubic centimeter, one cubic centimeter of water, it would weigh or it would have a mass of one gram. So what I know is that if I put this brass block in water and it has a density of 8.832, it's gonna sink to the bottom. And we kind of know that already, right? So I'm gonna drop it carefully and it sinks to the bottom and it sinks pretty quickly. Now, I'm gonna, oof, yuck. I'm gonna take the pine block and I'm gonna place it in water. And if it has a density of 0.768, it should float because it's less dense than water. It has a lower density than one. And it does. Floats pretty high on the surface, kind of. I know that you can't see that all that well, but, but it's, it's hanging out at the top of the water. Here's an interesting piece of information and you hopefully know this from math class. If you take a decimal like 0.768 and you change it to a percentage, that means that you're gonna move the decimal two spaces to the right. So 0.768 becomes 76.8%. This block, magically, when I place it in water, 76%, 76.8% of this block is under the surface of the water. And you can't really see that, but I'm going to show you how that works. This is a block of polyurethane. And polyurethane has a density of about 0.9, which is still less than one, but barely. So if I put a block of polyurethane in water and it has a density of 0.9, it should float but not in the same way as the block of pine. So I'm gonna to try to, hopefully you can see that. When you look at this block, almost all of it is under the surface of the water. It's barely breaking the surface because about 90% of the block is underwater because its density is 0.9. If you have something like this, now this is wood, and what most people think when we talk about wood is that it's gonna always float. And that's true for a lot of woods, but some wood is more dense than others. So I'm not going to tell you what the density of this block is, but I'm going to let it hang out in the water. It's not pine. It's probably some sort of oak. And oak is a little more dense. And so what we find is that this block has a density difficult to see, right? It doesn't really float and it doesn't really sink. And the reason it does that is because the density of this block is almost exactly that of water. So anytime you have an object that has a density of one and you put it in water, it doesn't matter what material it's made out of, it's going to bob around in the middle. It's not going to sink and it's not going to float. It's going to behave just like the water does. And that's kind of what's cool about density.